Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Killing the Cabal. Today we're going to be concentrating on some symbolism that I noticed um, in some of my research. Uh, you know, we, we've talked before about the, some of these elite parties that the, um, that the Rothschilds have had and, and so on. And, uh, you know, when I did this dive on these balls that would be held for actors and, um, singers and politicians and socialites, um, I started noticing a trend of costume. So a lot of times, uh, you know, sometimes artists or uh, actors or singers can incorporate this type of imagery into their act or into their art because um, it's more socially acceptable. People can kind of, uh, you know, just write it off as art and um, they can kind of hide behind that um you know, veneer of just tapping into their artistry and, and so on. Um, but elites can't really do that. Socialites can't really do that. Um, rock singers, rappers, they seem to be able to get away with this a, a little bit more easily, but the way that socialites and, um, and uh, politicians are able to get away with some of this is by going to some of these uh, costume balls. You know, maybe not uh, politicians quite as much, but, um, uh, but you know, different um, socialites and uh, elite figureheads, they are able to kind of pull this off uh, if they go to a party or if they go to a, a masquerade costume ball. So that's why they have so many of these things. Um, we're going to be talking about the Vestigi Ball in 1951. This was a ball that was held by um, the, his name was uh, Carlos, De, uh, let me see here, Carlos de Bestigi. I'm definitely not going to always say, <laughs> say these uh, names correctly, and I apologize if I don't say them right, but um, Carlos was a very uh, eccentric multi-millionaire. He was an art collector, interior decorator, very flamboyant. Um, he was often referred to as the Count of Monte Cristo. So uh, his nationalities were French and Spanish. And um, he was, there are rumors and uh, that he was supposedly bisexual, um, possibly even just homosexual. But, uh, you know, that's just not that that is a big deal, but um, that will play into something a little bit later on that I end up talking about. So the ball that he held was held um, September 3rd, 1951. It was a masked costume ball. He called it Le Ball Oriental. So a lot of people were dressed up... Um, in uh, Asian um, clothing, and there were there were a lot of people that uh, had Indian kind of Indian costumes on, and uh, you know Asian themed costumes. Um, but there were some people that kind of took creative license and did some other things that were uh, a little questionable. Not a little questionable, very questionable. And we're going to take a look at some of these costumes in a moment here. The first thing I want to do is just to remind everybody of some of the symbols that we see today in um, in art, supposed art, uh, and in television and in the music industry. Okay, so some of these symbols are going to be the upside down cross. Now, I did not see any upside down crosses at this ball, but that's just a reminder. Um, really prominent symbol would be the horns, of course. So uh, a lot of horns here at these masked balls. Okay, here we go. Here's one right here. These are costumes um, at some sort of festival or something that uh, Prince Harry attended. All right, so we have a singer here. She's got the horns on and there are horns in the background. Tattoos. This is a, you know, that horrid drag queen story time. 
I don't know why they need to dress as demons, but okay. All right, so Madonna, of course. Bette Midler, Isabella Blow. She was um, a uh, designer, clothing designer, and very good friends with Alexander McQueen. She actually killed herself, committed suicide. All right, so you got the you got the uh, idea there. All right, so we're gonna switch over here to this video now. I'm not gonna play the sound. I can't play the sound, but we're gonna just take a look at some of these costumes. I'll let you know who uh, these people are as we go through. All right, so the ball welcomed people on the canal. The boats came up. Everybody came up uh, to the party through the canal. People were trying to sneak in. Um, it was just crazy. Lots and lots of people there. I'm going to run through a list of some of the people that were there. All right, we're going to stop for a second. The gentleman in the t-shirt is um, Carlos de Bastigui, okay? So that's him before he's dressed up. He was just kind of directing traffic at first. All right, in a moment, okay, so here's some of the oriental costumes, all right? That was the theme of the party. All right, that's a fashion designer and his wife. I'm going to pause in just a moment here. All right, this is the Aga Khan. Okay, the Aga Khan the third. Uh, so Aga Khan the third was Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah. He was the 48th Imam of the Nizari Ismaili religion. Um, he actually, uh, let's see here, he was related to um, someone else that I, um, let's see here, someone else that I research, and now I can't find, okay, let's see here. I'll come back to that, but he's definitely related to somebody that, um, someone else that I had researched. And, you know, I'm, their name is just evading me right now, but we'll come back to that. Next up is um, Orson Welles here. All right, so here's Orson Welles. In a moment, you're going to see some other costumes. As I had mentioned, um, all right, here's Irene Dunn holding the rose. As I had mentioned, we have some, oh, there we go. All right, so this is an oriental themed costume party or ball. Now, like I said, sometimes people are gonna take creative license and do what they wanna do. Notice that a lot of the people, um, a lot of the women have moons on their dresses and um, the one woman uh, that we saw without a mask a few seconds ago, she had a moon clip in her hair. All right, so horns. And we'll be looking at pictures in a bit here. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So some people dressed up as religious figures. That's another thing. Strange thing. Um, let's keep it going. Okay. All right. So that's the end of the video. Now let's take a look at some of the pictures from the ball. Okay. All right. So here we have, let me just grab her name real quick. Hang on one second. It's hard to remember all these names. Okay. Her name is Lenore Finney. She was a surrealist um, artist and very, very much into the occult. Um, she did a lot of very macabre uh macabre artwork a lot of um death was in her art she was also uh very um she painted a lot of uh very sexual pictures uh she herself was um you know kind of uh i, I guess she was a lesbian um but could have been bisexual and was just kind of fluid in her sexuality and uh 
was said to have a lot of uh, partners. Okay, so her costume, um, I don't, oh, here we go. Okay, so Lenore Finney, artist. She has this uh, costume where she has these black angel wings, a black flowing dress. All right, so, I mean, I really don't think I need to say much more there. You can see the person that she's with has these moons on his uh, jacket there. All right, another very strange thing that I noticed. Um, now, this was not at the Bastigi Ball. This is just Lenore Finney uh, wearing some of her costumes that she would wear. Horns. Lots of birds. Well, not birds, uh, general, but... Um, Owl spe more more specifically owls, pardon me. Okay, so another close up of that owl mask. Okay. Now we're gonna go back to the. Let's see here. Here's Lenore Finney at a different ball with that owl mask. Let's go back to the Bastigi ball. All right, so this is another one of those uh, images that were just, it just kind of it was um, very strange to me. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut, um, then you know that the masquerades and uh, these balls where they, you know, you're masked up and... Uh, you'll notice that a lot of the masks are very strange looking. And these are, you know, I mean, just very disturbing to look at. Very strange, very disturbing. We have these very odd looking figures here in the background of the Bastigi ball. I'm not really sure what they're meant to represent, but I know this is, uh, you know, in the style of the 18th century, so lots of horns, though. Whoops, trying to zoom in on that. Lots of horns, lots of moons, masked figures kind of ominously in the background there. That's not a person, that's just a, uh, some kind of, um, you know, figure that they put up. Another strange thing here. Um, all right, so here's Salvador Dali, you know, but now that I think of it, I think this is a part of a different, um, uh, ball because, no, you know what, nope. Nope, that's Salvador Dali. Yep, at the Bastigi Ball. I didn't think he was there, but yes, he was. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through a list of people that were there. Uh, some of these names I don't recognize. Some of them I do. Um, okay, so we have Aga Khan III. We already touched on him a bit. Uh, Barbara Hutton, Jean Tierney, Countess Jacqueline de Ribes, or de Ribes, uh, Jacques Fath, Count Armand de la Roquefold, I'm not sure who that is, uh, Duff and Lady Diana Cooper, Orson Welles, Daisy Fellows, Paul Louis Weiler, Cecil Beaton, Gala Dolly, I'm not sure who that is. Okay, so that was... Um, Someone, oh, wife of Salvador Dali, okay. Uh, that might be who that is in the picture there, could be. She's with um, Salvador. Okay, so Baron de Chabrol, Desmond Guinness, okay. Um, I think that Desmond was the one that was related to 
Aga Khan somehow. I believe that's that's who it is. But isn't that interesting? This is the first time I'm reading this list, by the way, guys. So I'm learning uh, some of these names myself. Um, because I just found this list this morning as I was prepping for this video. So Desmond Guinness. Now let's just hang on one second. Desmond Walter Guinness is um, the father of Patrick Desmond Guinness. Okay. Um, and he is the father of Jasmine Guinness, the model. Uh, and also um, Jack Guinness as well. Um, okay, so going back to, let's see here, going back to that list. All right, Alex von Rosenberg, Baron de, uh, de, Re de Reddy, Prince and Princess. I'm not even going to attempt this name. It is just too out there. I can't even say that. Um, I'm going to scan to see if I recognize. Duchess of Devonshire, Princess Natalia Pavlona P uh, Paley, um, Ghislaine de Polignac. Okay, let's see. Princess Colonna. Prin wow, a lot of, lot of royalty. A lot of royalty. Fabrizio Clarici, Christian Dior. Okay, so an interesting fact about this ball. Christian Dior and Salvador Dali designed each other's costumes. Winston Churchill and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor were invited but did not attend, by the way. Just another little fact about this. Um... Okay, so there are a lot of uh, photographs of this ball, and um, let's see here. Okay, so very strange costume that, um, and, and this I this does look to be. I took a look at um, Gala Dali, and this does look to be uh, Salvador Dali's wife. Um, very strange costume that she is wearing. That horse just looks so creepy and uh, kind of looks like it might represent something like death or something like that. Um, okay, so I believe there is, yep, there's just a few more pictures here. All right, when you, in the beginning of the video, when I showed you the, um, the footage of this party, uh, this gentleman right here that is wearing this outfit, he and his wife showed up dressed as um, the sun and the moon. So he is the sun, his wife is the moon. Uh, I would like to show you something very interesting. I have The sun and the moon, there are so many different uh, ways that, that people use that to, to, um, to symbolize what they believe in. So, of course, there are so many different cults across the world. There are so many different um, uses for occult symbolism. So every cult uses symbolism and in different ways. Sometimes they cross over, sometimes they don't. So where someone might use um, the sun as a, symbol as, uh, a symbol as, um, let's say, you know, giving energy or it represents life. Other people might use that to represent vitality, fertility. So there's so many different ways that that can be represented. I would recommend, you know, I don't have time to go into what this could mean or what it does mean. I don't know because I don't know what cult these people were in or if they were in a cult um, to begin with. But it all kind of links up and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's go back here into the gallery there is, um, let's see here, I have to find it. There's a woman that um, got married and she used this, uh, these kind of sun symbols um, on her wedding dress. It was just the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, uh, but uh, I will show that to you as soon as I find it see here where where did we put that there's just so much of this stuff guys 
just trying to remember what this um what category I put it under. No, not here. Hang in there, guys. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. All right, okay, so this is one of Nikki Hilton's very good friends. Um, give me a moment. Uh, I think I actually have, um, I think I actually have some other pictures of her. Um, okay. All right, let's talk about this woman that you see right here. Okay, her name is Sabine Getty. Sabine Getty. Yes, she is has married into the Getty family. She is married to Joseph Getty. Okay, so um she is married to head fund, hedge fund manager Joseph Getty, who is the son of Mark Getty. Okay. And um, here she is. Uh, now, she the way that I found her was in 2019, they were featured, her and her husband were featured in a magazine of um, social, it was called The Social Power List, alongside Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, and Catherine, Duch of Cam Duchess of Cambridge, as having significant social influence in the United Kingdom. Um, a really uh, interesting thing to, to think about here is she had two children. She had a daughter that she named Jean honor and a son that she named Jupiter Mark. So Jupiter um, has a lot of uh, that has a lot of symbolism wrapped up in that. Um, but uh, she uses a lot of gold. She's a jewelry designer. She loves gold. All about gold. We know what that symbolizes for the elites. But this is her wedding gown. Um, now, if you're really into fashion, some might, you know, say, well, you know, she's just really into fashion and it's, um, it's couture, couture, whatever, not couture, but, um, you know, high fashion and, uh, you know, people just like that kind of thing when they're in those, uh, circles. But here's her wedding gown, her shoes, her ring pillow, okay, all of this sun symbolism, I think there's more to it. I really do. That sun symbolism is just, it's, it's all over the place, just like, um, you know, now, just like it was back then. Okay. They all use the same symbolism. Here you have the Rothschild party on the left and Lady Gaga on the right. Okay, um, so that wraps up this episode of Killing the Cabal, and uh, I would recommend um, right now just, you know, just to wrap up this video, I, first I want to thank all of my Patreons, thank you so much, uh, your support when you donate to my Patreon account, um, of course all my content is free to everybody, uh, but anybody that... Um, donates to my Patreon account. I want you to understand where that money goes. I have to pay for certain subscriptions to be able to interview people. Uh, I have to pay for subscriptions to be able to edit videos, create, um, uh, to be able to create, uh, my, um, my artwork for my, my YouTube channel and so on for my interviews and for my research. So I really appreciate that all the money goes towards that. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of money coming in to Patreon right now, which is fine because I don't have a whole lot of money going out either. I basically break even, which is fine because I have a full-time job, but this isn't, 
you know, my work work. Um, this is just a labor of love, but I do appreciate that people are helping me because, uh, otherwise that would be coming out of my pocket. And, um, I'm already spending so much time to, you know, research this stuff. So I want to say thank you to all of my Patreons. Um, I also want to say right now, you know, we might be, uh, kind of living in some, uh, confusing times. Just continue to pray because the whole, uh, point of this channel, Killing the Cabal, was to bring to light the things that have been hidden from us, the hidden truths. And we've already seen so much get revealed, guys. All right. So we've already seen so much get revealed. We've already seen a lot uh, come to the surface, come to the light. And we've been able to take that and run with it and, and dig up more stuff because of that. I know I have personally. So let's continue doing this work because it is a noble cause. It is a good cause. It is um, important that people understand what they get when they when they watch movies, when they listen to m music. Um, it's important to understand how we're being influenced. The clothing that we buy, the, the um, you know, any, basically any form of entertainment or news, you, it's so important to understand who these people are that are feeding this um, information and, and data and entertainment to us. Uh, they are a part of a cabal, okay? So I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to use that word, by the way, C-A-B-A-L. I should probably start spelling it now. Um, because it's been, uh, that word has been uh, kind of edited out of things now. It's I think it's a part of the algorithm. You're going to start noticing in some of my future videos that I'm going to be spelling things or kind of uh, using a roundabout way of uh, saying things. So I will be producing another video really soon. Um, there's a couple of different things that I'm I'm looking at. I'm probably, the next video that I'm going to do is probably just going to be a mishmash of research. It's not going to be one topic like this video has been, but it's because I wasn't able to dig up enough on these, you know, random things that I was looking at. So it's going to be kind of a mishmash video and uh, just, you know, look for that. I'm still on YouTube right now, but, bef you know, I'm not sure for how long. Uh, I do have a bit shoot channel. I do have Vimeo. And I am on Gab and uh, Telegram as well. So good luck to all of you out there. Stay safe and stay healthy. And until next time.